Uh, my name is Dana Jan. I'm the Game Director and Design Director on The Order 1886. So let's start by talking a little about the goals heading into this game for you guys. Okay. I mean, the goals for us really was to bring a really cool new fresh IP to the PlayStation 4. Um, when we had this opportunity, we were like, wow, this is what we always dreamed of. We can't squander this. So uh, early on, it also was you know, important for us to kind of figure out what is it that we want to do, what kind of landscape and what type of story do we want to get ourselves into? Because once we commit to it, you know, we're all in. So we want to bring whatever we can, the best that we can to everybody. So um, alternate history was something that was really intriguing to a lot of us at the company. And uh, it just seemed like you know, coming off of working on God of War, one of the things that I tell people that I really enjoyed about it was mythology to me is almost like a history. I mean, maybe it's sure it may not be true or real, but there's so much detail in all that you know that people people latch onto it. people become very attached to the characters in it and it gives you I think a really good canvas to start from so uh, taking that and leveraging real history in our game and then taking it and twisting it and creating things that people go is that really how it happened wait does that guy really exist I, I know of that guy but I don't know did he do that I think that's just, that's it's a really charming thing to play with and I feel like for us London the 1800s the Industrial Revolution was just like such a ripe opportunity that we, we couldn't pass it up. Talk a little about the story as far as what you guys have revealed. Yeah, so far, I mean, what we're really revealing is that obviously being set in the 1800s, it's uh, it's it's fairly contemporary. The issues that they're dealing with, the kind of the class struggle and the warfare and stuff like that, it's it basically harkens to things that we're familiar with right now because the 1800s, let's face it, really isn't that that old. Um, but the interesting thing for us is that these characters basically come from roots that are much much older, hundreds of years old, with the, the Arthurian lore element of it. You know, you'll hear these names like Sir Percival, Sir Galahad, Arthur. These these things are like, oh wow, they're talking about those guys, the round table. So we took that that story that people are, you know, they, they love it so much. We said, what if these guys actually carried on that tradition? You know, they found some means. There was something different about our world where they could live longer than everybody else and kind of carry the torch. And we said, okay, well, this thing we came up with called Blackwater is this thing that's very, very rare, very sacred, and it has regenerative properties that allow them to heal themselves, but it also extends life. So these guys live uh, about 10 years longer, uh, 10 times, sorry, longer than the average human does. So while Galahad looks like he's in his 30s, he's really like over 100 years old. Um, it allows them to go, wow, we've dealt with a lot of stuff. We've seen a lot of combat. We've fought a lot of different types of enemies. We've become very, very, very uh, tactically knowledgeable. And they probably elevate themselves to, a, a, at least from a fighting standpoint, a much, much higher uh, combat kind of competency than anybody else in the world could. These would be the guys that you would put into battle if you had to fight something worse than man. And that kind of gave us another opportunity for another twist, which is it's not just man. We have these things called half-breeds. So half-breeds are this divergence from humanity that basically the humans look at as like a plague or an abomination and uh, likewise. So we kind of tell both sides of the story from half-breed and human. Um, so you would call upon the knights to essentially make sure that whatever type of you know, onslaught that the, you know, the half-breeds were causing, that the, the knights of the round table are the answer to kind of try to stop that. And from a gameplay perspective, in addition to giving rejuvenation and old power, talk about Blackwater and what that does when you when you go into the zone. Right, yeah. So we showed a mechanic today called Black Sight. Uh, what's exciting about that is like we took this idea of the notion of, you know, like people talk about experiencing time slow. People experience, you know, like it was almost like time stood still. You know, I, I was so focused and in the moment that I could see things or, or, or focus in on something and it seemed like it took forever, but really it's just it's a flash, you know. We hear like, you know, people in sports or, or racing or accidents, things like that, they they kind of talk about this. And we even looked into some of the science of it and we said, okay, what if these guys like from drinking black water so much, maybe that heightens certain other senses in them and we could actually somehow convey that through a gameplay mechanic and we said, oh, oh cool, okay, what if, you know, we see these very flashy things and moments in, in movies that have really cool gunplay where it's like slow-mo and stuff like that and, and obviously other games have also kind of tried slow motion. Um, what we didn't want to do is we didn't want to have ours be something that was like, I aim with the analog sticks all the time to shoot. I have to use two sticks all the time. When we engage Black Sight, when we activate it, we turn it on, we tap into that kind of inner focus. Let's let's make these guys really seem badass. You know, we throw you in this very cool cinematic presentation. He whips to a target. He, you know, he kind of almost shows you know like a really heroic stance, and he just targets these guys and just blows them away. And then you can move and target another character much faster than they can even move, almost as if he's kind of predicting what they're going to do. And the end result is just it's it's this really cool burst of gameplay that we have this loop that we build around where you kind of you build up the ability to uh, to, to use black sight, and then you know you after you're done you have to kind of work towards it again. So for us, it breaks up kind of the, the core loop and it's, it's it's really cool you guys also have a cool new weapon talk a little about that and it's, it's two potential uses sure 
Uh, we're also showing the thermite rifle for the first time, which, um, which is a two-part weapon. It's got a primary fire that fires uh, a thermite, aluminum, iron oxide, dust, and then it's got a underslung kind of flare launcher, and you shoot the flare into the dust cloud that you've created, and it just explodes and ignites into fire, and then the fire rains down on enemies, and you can basically shoot over cover. You can shoot at walls and ceilings, come down on guys. Um, so it's, it's a different, it's, it's less direct, and it's also, uh, it's kind of like, when we were thinking about this gun, a lot of the weapons that we have are very precision-based. Like, at that time, uh, gun manufacturers are starting to get really good at guns being accurate. Rifles and stuff like that are really accurate. And at our core range, we wanted to kind of create a weapon that was a little bit sloppier, you know? It's, it's, it's kind of like a kicks like a mule, and it has, you know, it sprays tons of shots. It's a 10-round burst-firing weapon. But at the same time, the end result of that mess is that if you ignite it, it just, you know, fires everywhere. And so the payoff is huge. It's very over the top. It's satisfying. Um, and so you kind of don't worry so much about precision. You just, you know, I paint that general area and anything in there, you're done.